Zigbee is a word that has almost become synonymous with the smart home, but how does it actually work and what are some of the upsides and downsides to using Zigbee in our smart homes? Welcome back to the Smart Home Protocol series, where today we are taking a look at Zigbee. Unlike Wi-Fi that we looked at in the last video, Zigbee is a protocol that was designed specifically for low power wireless applications like consumer electronics, medical equipment, industrial automation, and you guessed it, home automation. However, just like Wi-Fi, Zigbee also operates in the 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency space, but that doesn't mean its characteristics are the same. Actually, far from it. Zigbee is a wireless mesh network where you have two different types of devices, a Zigbee coordinator and a Zigbee end device. The end devices are our battery operated devices, such as motion sensors, and these communicate back to the coordinator. The coordinator is a mains power device responsible for starting the network initially and maintaining the network connectivity. And there can only be one coordinator in a Zigbee network. It receives information from the end devices and is responsible for converting this information into a format that computers and our phones can actually use by bridging it to our home networks since our phones and other devices cannot speak Zigbee natively. So far that sounds pretty straightforward and similar to Wi-Fi, right? And that's where our third type of device comes in, the Zigbee router. Not to be confused with the Wi-Fi router, leave it to the tech industry to keep using confusing names for things. The Zigbee router is a special device on the Zigbee network, which helps with its mesh capabilities. This is a mains power device or sensor, such as a smart socket or light switch, which just like our battery operated devices, can also send information to the coordinator, but this time it can actually route data packets from those end devices to the coordinator too. This is a game changer for Zigbee because it means that Zigbee end devices that would otherwise be physically out of range are able to connect and join the Zigbee network through the Zigbee routers. They are also particularly useful for adding overall strength and reliability to a Zigbee network since you can have many routers in a single Zigbee network, all of which can provide extra pathways for data packets to travel down Great for if another router ever goes offline. Zigbee devices can join a network by first placing the coordinator in pairing mode and then pressing and holding the pair button on the end device. And after a few seconds, the device will join the network. Zigbee also implements AES 128 bit encryption to help keep the network secure. So that is how Zigbee works in a nutshell. But what makes Zigbee one of the most popular smart home protocols out there at the moment? Zigbee's first upside is Wi-Fi's biggest downside, battery life. Zigbee was designed with low power applications in mind and it certainly delivers on that promise. Usually the biggest draw of power with wireless applications is having a radio powered on. Zigbee minimizes this by allowing end devices to turn off their radio when the device is not transmitting, a feature that is not possible with Wi-Fi networks. And this means that a lot of Zigbee devices spend most of their time asleep. This is huge for saving power. And the net result is that some Zigbee devices can last for well over a year on a single battery. Take a look at the hookups video, which shows a Zigbee door sensor lasting for over 878,000 cycles before the battery ran out. That's a lot of opening and closing the door. Zigbee is also an open standard, which makes it low cost compared to some other standards. And because anyone can use it, that does mean that there is thousands of different Zigbee devices out there on the market. Everything from motion sensors and contact sensors to door locks, sirens, smoke alarms, and everything in between. Meaning that if you are looking for a smart home device, chances are you will probably find it available in Zigbee format. Zigbee's other huge advantage is, as we spoke about earlier, its mesh capabilities, which can really help improve the overall distance and reliability of the network by adding additional devices that as well as improving the Zigbee network can also be used to benefit your smart home as a whole. Wi-Fi can also be extended by adding more access points, but this would generally be far more costly 
not to mention time consuming than extending a Zigbee network would be. Zigbee so far is sounding pretty amazing, right? It's relatively cheap, has a wide range of available devices, works great with battery power devices, and has mesh capabilities. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, and there are some downsides to the Zigbee protocol. Let's start with that last one, the mesh capabilities. Remember earlier I said that you can add as many Zigbee routers as you want, but there can only be one Zigbee coordinator for the network? Well, that Zigbee coordinator is a potential failure point for the entire network, should that coordinator fail or go offline. Then the whole Zigbee network is dead in the water, and it's not like with Wi-Fi where you can just replace a dead access point and all of your devices will reconnect. If you are forced to replace a dead coordinator, none of your Zigbee devices will automatically reconnect. They will need to be manually connected again before they will work. Zigbee can also suffer from some rather unfortunate compatibility issues. See, what started out as an open standard with great intentions for intercompatibility between devices and manufacturers, that open nature unfortunately became its downfall when manufacturers took that open standard and they twisted it into something to fit their own needs, resulting in a very fragmented ecosystem where one manufacturer's Zigbee hub or coordinator will only work with that brand's devices and sensors. And this is arguably the biggest problem with Zigbee devices is that you never know if it will play nice with another device. Now, there have certainly been huge strides to combat this problem, such as community websites that list individual device compatibility or software that can force devices to work together properly, but this really only helps users of open source platforms like Home Assistant or OpenHab. Zigbee 3.0 has also been a big help here too by requiring manufacturers to implement the protocol in a standard way before they can be certified. But even though Zigbee 3.0 was finalized in 2015, we are only now starting to see Zigbee 3.0 devices become more popular after the damage has been done. Finally, you know how Zigbee is great for battery power devices because of its low power consumption? Well, not only is the power consumption low, but so is the bandwidth. Zigbee tops out at a theoretical max of around 250 kilobits per second, but don't confuse low bandwidth with thinking that Zigbee is slow, far from it. Zigbee is generally very quick to respond when it needs to be and is perfectly suited for most devices and sensors since they aren't high bandwidth applications. The only real limitation of its low throughput is that it makes it unsuitable for video applications like doorbells or CCTV cameras, both of which would be much better suited to using ethernet or Wi-Fi anyways. So what is the final decision on Zigbee? And is it worth considering for use within our smart home? Absolutely, Zigbee is a great smart home protocol that has many good things going for it and is definitely worth considering so long as you're aware of some of its limitations that we just talked about. But overall, Zigbee is an absolute staple in the smart home world. And speaking of staples, in the next video in this series, we are going to be checking out one of Zigbee's main competitors, Z-Wave. Make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. And whilst you're down there, you may as well drop a little like on this video and leave me a comment as well as telling me what you think about Zigbee in the smart home and if you are using Zigbee in your own smart home. But other than that, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video all about Z-Wave.